To draw the Lewis structure for MgCO3, magnesium carbonate, we first need to realize that magnesium is a metal, and then CO3, that's a group of nonmetals. It's the carbonate polyatomic ion. So we have a metal and some nonmetals. That means this is an ionic compound. In ionic compounds, the metal will transfer valence electrons to the nonmetal. So let's write our Mg, and then we'll put the carbonate ion next to that. Magnesium's in group 2 on the periodic table. That means it has two valence electrons. It'll transfer those valence electrons to the CO3. When it does that, it's losing two valence electrons. Electrons are negative, so it loses those two negative charges, and it becomes 2 plus. The CO3, it gained those two electrons, so now it has a 2 minus charge. If you add these up, they're equal to 0 because MgCO3, that's a neutral compound. Since we have these positive charges here and the negative charges here, those are going to be attracted, and that's what's going to form this ionic bond between the Mg and the CO3. So that's the Lewis structure for magnesium carbonate. We should note, however, that what we've drawn is a formula unit for magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate's made up of a group of these formula units in a repeating pattern. It's called a crystal. But this is useful because it shows us how the valence electrons were transferred from the metal to the nonmetal and the overall structure of one formula unit. We could also write the Lewis structure like this here. You can see we have our double bond here, just like there's a double bond here, and we have our Mg2 plus like we have right here. For the negative 2, we can see the negative charges, those reside on these single bonded oxygens. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for MgCO3, magnesium carbonate, and thanks for watching.